Hello there ladies and gents and welcome back once again to Andy Mancam's Garage. Today we're going to be looking at this, the Ansel MT700 Motorcycle Diagnostic Tool. Now in the interest of honesty, this device was given to me completely free of charge by Ansel to test out. In the box here we have the MT700 Diagnostic Tool itself. This is a heavily ruggedized Android tablet, handy little kickstand on the back there. It's got speaker on the back, on the top here, power button, USB-C socket, serial main cable connector port, USB-A socket, and the power port for charging and powering the device. Also in the box, we have the mains adapter and the main connection cable with OBD2 connection port on the end of it. Underneath that, we've got the instructions and a quick start guide, as well as a packing list. And then underneath that, there are millions of cables, pretty much most of the motorcycle manufacturers. Harley, Kawasaki, Polaris, Benelli, BRP, Yamaha, another Kawasaki, BMW, Ducati, as well as a bunch of other adapters. And I'm pretty sure for my Aprilia, the red one is the one that I need. Obviously the Italian one's gonna be red, isn't it? And then last but not least, a power cable so that the device can be powered off of the battery of the bike that you're currently running a diagnostic on. And all of these cables, I'll take the Yamaha one as an example, just connect into the OBD diagnostic cable, that end then connects into the top of the tablet, and then the ends go into whatever particular connector you've got on your bike. The Yamaha obviously has the most variety, and there's a real choice there. And then obviously with the adapter pieces, same concept, just goes into the end of the OBD connector, and then that end goes into the diagnostic port of your motorbike. And the whole thing comes in this handy, closable, plastic carry case, perfect for being kicked around in the garage without anything getting damaged. Take the protector off the front of the screen there and we can have a look at the device itself. Push the power button on the top, hold it down for three seconds, and the device powers up. You know, for some reason we have to accept the terms and conditions every time we turn it on and it loads automatically into this diagnostic screen. It's currently running on battery, it's about half full, so if you want to you can charge it up at home and then go into the garage and use the thing without having to worry about having it connected to any power. Now when the unit first arrived, obviously it wasn't connected to any internet, that was nice and easy to take care of. I just went into settings, down to system settings, and you come to the Wi-Fi and then put in the password using the software keyboard and off you go. Once you're connected to the internet, you then need to check that your firmware is up to date, come into upgrade, and it'll tell you if you need to update any software in there. That's a nice easy process. You just click yes, tell it to install, wait for it to do the installing, and then you're fully up to date. Now before you start using the diagnostic app, you do need to set yourself up an account with Ansel, but that's then linked to your device's status and your status for updates and things in the future, because with this device you get one year of free updates, and then after that any updates that you need for the device are going to cost you, I think, around 80 euros per year. And as I said, they'll be linked to your Ansel account. Now, out of the box, I found that my unit had nothing installed in the way of motorcycle diagnostic information, so I had to go back into Upgrade again, and then select from this huge list all of the things I wanted, and for the sake of this review, I've downloaded simply absolutely everything. Wait for all of that to download, and then install. So then, when I go into the Moto Diag section, now I've got all of the brands that this unit supports in there for me to select, and it is quite a lot. And then if I tap on one of these, I'm gonna, I don't know, Ducati as an example, and then I can get an idea of what's supported. So for a start, you can see all the models that are selected, so everything that starts with one. Let's take a look at what we can do with the 800 Scrambler E5, and then we can look at the engine, the ABS, the dash, the Bluetooth, and we can reset the service lamp. For the Aprilia, is actually inside this service option, getting a quick upgrade. If I select service reset, we can see all of the bikes for which this unit can reset the service light. So we've got Aprilia, BMW, BRP, Ducati, Harley-Davidson, Honda, Piaggio, Suzuki, Triumph, and Yamaha. And if I select the TPS to reset the TPS module, you can see how many bikes are supported there. ECU reset and the ABS bleed, and unfortunately, Aprilia isn't included there. That's a shame. Service reset. If I click on Aprilia, enter into that. Now we can see on the right here all of the bikes that are supported for this function. 
including the Tuareg. There's no bike connected, so it's not going to connect to anything. So what we need to do is head into the garage and get this connected to my bike. But just before we do that, have a quick look at the rest of what's going on here on the, the tablet here. Click the middle thing. See here that on the desktop, we've got Adobe Reader. You can see any downloads that I've made. There's a file explorer for looking at anything that happens on the device, things I've downloaded. Any desk is to connect remotely with the help desk for them to give us any insistence that we need. Browser to browse the internet. Didn't mean to do that, but here we go. So here I can just type in a web address and we've got an ordinary internet browser on the tablet as well. Good for if you need to do any research or anything while you're working on the bike. And then there's a gallery for looking at pictures, quick support, also similar to any desk, another way to connect to the help desk, calculator, a clock, the settings, and then the diagnostic program that we started off with. Anyway, with all that out of the way, let's get this into the garage, and plug it into the bike. So here we are in the garage with the bike, and thanks to the handy kickstand on the back, the MT700 is standing wonderfully on the bike there. So now I need to take the main cable, connect the printer cable looking end into the top of the MT700. Onto the other end, I connect the Aprilia adapter, and then that connects to the diagnostic port of the motorbike, which can be found nestling here just behind the battery. Unclip that from its little housing, and then connect that onto the end of the adapter coming off of the main cable. And that is now the MT700 connected up to the Aprilia Touareg. If I turn on the bike, first of all, I see that down here in the bottom right hand corner, the device is getting power from the diagnostic port. So I don't even need to use the battery connections to keep this thing powered with this particular bike. So then I come into Moto Diag, select Aprilia, Diagnosis, I've got Touareg, so I've select Touareg. Now what happens if we go for an auto scan? So here we go, it's picking up the engine ECU, the ABS ECU, and the instrument panel ECU. So what happens if we come into engine? So first of all, you can see the software, calibration date, vehicle model, all sorts of useful information, and the VIN number of the bike. Okay, next we'll check DTC, see some fault codes. Here we go, we've got some fault codes in there. Okay. I think that one there, we can clear by clicking clear DTC. Yes. There we go. I've erased that code. Do the same for the others. They've erased and then come immediately back. So here on maintenance guide, there's a little icon to click. They go here to search some sort of a clue. Search button has taken me to Google and then Google took me straight to the Aprilia forum with the code. So I can have a read through this, figure out what I need to do next. Okay, for the first one, I think what I need to do is come out of here, go to special function, agree to that. It does give us a chance to look at the special features that we have here. Throttle self-learn, key error count reset, wheel tooth value reset. And then do a control unit EEPROM reset. Turn the dashboard off. I think it means ignition off. Turn the ignition off and OK. Turn on the key. Bike is back on. Dash is up. Press OK to continue. Regulation carried out. Okay, so if we go to DTC again. Clear that P1608 code. and it immediately comes back. Okay, but for the second code, what I figured out is this is to do with the throttle position sensor. So again, if we come back, go to special function, agree with that, with the password, try the throttle self-learn. So regulation carried out, so hopefully Come back into the error codes. There we go. One error code is gone. The throttle position sensor has now newly learned its position. As this one here, I'm going to have to do some more reading into that. Although one possibility is... Look at that. The top menu actually also shows me the error that I've currently got active. But anyway, I come out of this. Into here, do ECU reset and Aprilia. Select Aprilia again. Uh, there we go, unfortunately. My bike isn't included. The only ones available here are the Capo Nord 1200 and the Capo Nord 1200 Rally. So I can't reset my ECU completely. Could have potentially been one way to fix the other error. So although 
There are many bikes available that you can reset the ECU on with this unit. Ducati, Honda and KTM. My Aprilia Touareg isn't one of them yet. Hopefully that's an update that might come soon. But anyway, moving on. If we come back in to the Moto Diag, to Aprilia again. Select the Touareg again. Go for auto scan. So this time I'm going to look in the ABS ECU. So in the ABS ECU, we have no fault codes. That's good. And here on read data stream, we can actually see a whole bunch of information. If I actually pull the brake lever for the front, you can see the front wheel cylinder pressure goes up. And also the battery voltage is there still as well. And this, of course, we can also record. So if we wanted to save that information as it's happening and then look at it again later or freeze it, and then we can save that as a screenshot. So that's reading the data stream from the ABS ECU. We can do the same again on the engine ECU. Select the RPM, air temperature, you know, induction pressure, why not? Lambda sensor voltage. Yeah, a lot of information there that you can select. And if I turn the engine on. See the engine RPM showing there, as well as the air temperature at 18 degrees. Okay, so finally we've got instrument panel. See if we've got any error codes in the instrument panel. No fault codes there. Very good. It's the special function. Now we've got service reset. Restore user code, reset keys, and odometer writing. For read data stream, what have we got in there? No, oh, number of memory keys. Two keys currently bonded to my bike. The total odometer, 18,445 kilometers. Remaining kilometers till last coupon. I think that means till next service, which is zero because my light for the service indicator is currently on. And then the little icon here shows again, but the little ECU with a tick showing that there's no error codes here. So we've still got the one on the engine, none anywhere else. Oh, that's quite good. If you wanted to, you could actually just click Scan DTC on this menu and it'll scan all of your ECUs at once without you having to individually go into each one. That's pretty cool. But in the meantime, the most important thing for me right now, if we exit out of this, then come into the service, the next thing I want to know is about the ABS bleed, because this is an important part of servicing the bike. You need to be able to cycle the ABS to bleed the old fluid out. And unfortunately, Aprilia Touareg is not on the list there. All we've got is Benelli, BMW, BRP, Harley, KTM, Piaggio, Polaris, and Triumph. That's a shame, but again, hopefully they're going to figure out an update for that in the future. But anyway, that's all pretty cool. The information that we can find there, the stuff that we can read. Uh, and finally, the last thing that I want to do is come into service here, service reset, Come to Aprilia, select that, enter diagnosis, find the Tuareg, enter into the instrument panel, ECU. And then as you can see here, this little spanner is the server's reset light. That says service is due, but I actually did the service myself and I've just left this light showing. But now with the MT700, I can get rid of that. If I click enter, go OK, adjustment is in process. And look at that, the surface indicator light is gone, thanks to the MT700, brilliant. So there we go, that is everything that I can think of to show you about the MT700 from Ansel. Looks like it's a really comprehensive little bit of kit. Doesn't have everything for every bike, but it has a lot of stuff for a lot of bikes. Of course, with such versatility and all of the cables and accessories you get with it, it does come with a hefty price tag. This thing currently on the Ansel website is going for about 890 euros, but you can, with a code in the description, get yourself 40 euros, $40 or whatever money you use off of one of these if you should choose to buy one. And I know that price probably seems pretty hefty if you've just got one bike in the garage, but in that case, you probably don't need this device. But if you've got a fleet of bikes in your garage or you're a small workshop, then this kind of thing could be pretty handy. And then suddenly the price isn't quite so hefty. Huge thanks to Ansel for sending this over to me for testing. It's great that I've been able to check my fault codes, find out what's going on in the bike, and hopefully in the future fix one of them that I don't yet know what to do about, and also turn off my service reset light. And then finally, huge thanks to you at home for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, give it a like. If you didn't, give it a dislike. Otherwise, keep your bike shiny, keep yourselves out of trouble, and I will see you out there. Ta-ra!